Is time travel possible? Is time an illusion a construct of the human mind? When did time begin? When is time going to stop? What is time? For ages now, everyone has been asking these questions. We've tried our very best to provide definitive answers to these questions. Yet despite our best efforts, time remains a captivating puzzle that sparks controversy and debate. One provocative proposition is the idea that time is merely an illusion, a construct of the human mind. Could it be that time as we perceive it is not an objective reality, but a subjective experience created by our consciousness? Furthermore, the concept of time travel adds another layer of controversy to the discussion. Is it possible to traverse the vast depths of time, journeying backward or forward in history? And if so, how can we achieve such a feat? Well, it's not as hard as it sounds. In 1950, over-lunch physicist Enrico Fermi famously asked, if there is intelligent extraterrestrial life in the universe, then where are they? Indicating that we have never met aliens or came across evidence of their existence, such as radio signals, which would be proof of a technological society. We could pose that same question about time travelers. If time travel is possible, where are all the time travelers? The question, known as the Fermi Paradox, is an important one. After all, if it were possible to travel through time, would we not have bumped into a bunch of observers from the future at critical junctures in history? It is unlikely to assume that they all managed to perfectly disguise themselves. Without making any errors in the design of the clothes they wore, their accents, their vocabulary, etc. Another option is that time travel is possible, but it is used with the utmost care and tight control. Due to all the dangers we discuss here, on June 28, 2009, Physicist Stephen Hawking carried out a scientific experiment which was meant to answer this question once and for all. He brought snacks, balloons and champagne and hosted a secret party for time travelers only, but sent out the invitations only on the next day. If no one showed up, he argued, that would be proof that time travel to the past is not possible. The invitees failed to arrive. I sat and waited for a while, but nobody came. He reported at the Seattle Science Festival in 2012. Multiple time travelers also undermined the possibility of a fixed and consistent timeline, assuming that the past can indeed be changed. Imagine, for example, a nail-biting derby between the top clubs, Hapol Jericho and Maccabi Jericho. Originally, Maccabi won, so a Hapol fan traveled back in time and managed to lead to his team's victory. Maccabi fans would not give up and did the same, Soon, the whole stadium is filled with time travelers and paradoxes. In addition to the problems that time travel poses for anyone trying to keep the notion of cause and effect in order, time travelers may also face, or already have faced, other challenges from physics, even classical physics. One issue you have to consider during time travel, and which science fiction writers usually prefer to ignore for convenience sake, is the question of arrival at the specified time destination and what would happen to us there. It is usually assumed, with no good reason, that if someone is traveling through time, he or she will land in the same place, but at a different time, past or future. But this is where we hit a snag. The Earth rotates around the Sun at a speed of 110,000 kilometers per hour, and the solar system itself is moving in its trajectory around the galaxy at a speed of 750,000 kilometers per hour. If we time travel for even a few seconds and stay in the same coordinates of space, we will probably find ourselves floating in outer space and perhaps even manage a quick glance around before we die. Our time machine will have to take into account this movement of the heavenly bodies and place us at exactly the right spot in space. This alone may be resolved since time travel, in any case, takes place between two points in the four-dimensional space-time continuum. According to the theory of general relativity, the theoretical foundation for time travel, space and time are a single physical entity, known as space-time. This entity can be bent and distorted. In fact, gravity itself is an external manifestation of space-time distortion. Time travel would be possible if we could create a closed space-time loop or if we could go from one point to another through a shortcut called a wormhole. This would, in any case, not be just moving from one point in time to another, but would also include moving through space. Thus, from the outset, the journey is not only in time, 
but necessarily includes a destination point in space, which we will need to pre-program on our machine, of course. In practice, the situation is more complicated, especially if we want to go into the distant past or distant future. The speed of the celestial bodies, and even the Earth's shape, and the structure of the continents, the seas and mountains on the face of the Earth, change over the years. And because even a tiny deviation in our knowledge of the past can land us in the core of the Earth, in outer space, or somewhere else that immediately reduces life expectancy to zero, time travel becomes a Russian roulette. Let's assume we cope with this problem and manage to get to the exact point in space-time that can sustain life. Careful, we're not there yet. We still have to deal with momentum. Momentum is a conserved quantity, which basically represents the potential of a body to continue moving at the speed and direction in which it is already traveling. If we were to jump out of a moving car, heaven forbid, conservation of momentum is what would cause us to roll on the ground and probably get injured, in the best case scenario. And so, if we leap in time, say a month back, and land at the exact same point on Earth, we would discover, much to our dismay, that even if we started motionless in relation to the ground, now the ground underneath us is moving quickly at one angle or another towards us. Thus, even if we were lucky enough not to crash immediately on impact, we're likely to hit some obstacle. And if by some miracle, we were to survive, we would quickly find ourselves burning up in the atmosphere or gasping for air in space, because we have far exceeded the escape velocity from Earth. A possible solution to this problem is to plan our landing point ahead, so that the ground speed will be equal in size and direction to our exit speed. But this places many constraints on our journey. We could always leap into space, where there are hardly any moving objects to be bumped into, and only then land again at our point of destination on Earth. Having said all that, this problem arises chiefly when we assume that time hopping is immediate, that we disappear from one point in time and immediately appear at another, without losing mass, energy or momentum. But since a realistic journey in time is not instantaneous, rather it involves traveling along space-time, it is no different from other types of journeys. This being the case, we can hope that we could adjust our speed to the desired value and direction prior to landing just like a spacecraft slowing down before landing on a planet. We should also keep in mind that thankfully, we will have access to a powerful technology that would enable us to cope with such problems. Time travel technology itself. For example, we might decide to send thousands of tiny probes ahead of us, each to a slightly different point in space-time. Some of them, maybe even most, will be destroyed for one of the reasons already mentioned. The others will wait patiently until the present and then feed their programmed coordinates into the time machine. Thus, by definition, the destination entered will be safe for us, except perhaps for the annoying probe shower, hitting the travelers. For the travelers themselves, the entire process will be immediate. What are your thoughts on this? Tell us by commenting below. To learn more about space science, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon.